How do you start to say goodbye, especially when it's towards something so near and dear to your heart that you can't imagine a world without it? It wasn't so long ago that I watched Neon Genesis Evangelion for the first time, but upon hearing the first note of A Cruel Angel's Thesis, I knew that this anime would be something special to me. And let me preface this video by saying I don't fully understand Evangelion, and I think that's okay. Because if you want to watch an analysis video on what I claim is the best anime of all time, there are plenty of creators who are more intelligent than I, and understood the subtext of this franchise better than I did. And instead of trying to shove yet another Evangelion analysis down your throat, I'm gonna try to disguise my analysis of the franchise as my farewell to it. So, I ask that you join me in this video as I learn how to say goodbye to all of Evangelion. Hideki Anno originally introduced the world to Neon Genesis Evangelion back in 1995, but it wouldn't be until about 25 years later that I would get to experience the wonders of Evangelion. Prior to watching this masterpiece, I knew nothing about it, aside from its legacy within the anime community and the oh-so-infamous hospital scene. So, I really had no idea what I was getting myself into when I searched up Neon Genesis Evangelion on Netflix for the first time. And what followed was one of the best but most uncomfortable experiences of my life. From the very first scene of Evangelion, I could tell that this wasn't going to be a normal anime. Maybe it was the legendary opening that preceded the show, or the surreal experience of seeing an angel for the first time, or even just those goddamn cicadas that won't shut the fuck but regardless, this show presented itself as your standard monster of the week anime at the start, while also carrying a much deeper theme, resiliency. Our first view of this world is the government desperately trying to destroy a mythical creature called an angel. We don't know anything about angels, but from the desperation in the government officials' faces, we learn to fear them. And in the middle of all this chaos, there's a lone boy waiting to get picked up by a strange woman. We would later learn that this boy's name is Shinji Ikari, and grow to hate him throughout the show. <laughs> yes, you heard that right. I hated Shinji for the majority of Evangelion. After Shinji refuses to help his father in the fight against the angels, Gendo Ikari forces an injured Rei Ayanami to pilot the Eva Unit 01. Seeing the sorry state that Rei is in, Shinji realizes that he mustn't run away, and agrees to get in the robot. In this moment of heroism, Shinji triumphantly rises to the surface to exterminate the angel and save humanity. At least, that's what he was expected to do. Upon arriving at the surface, Shinji is overcome by his fear, and proceeds to get the ever-living shit beat out of him by the angel. I hated Shinji not because he was weak, but because he was real. When we watch stories, it's usually to escape reality and not embrace it. And Shinji wasn't your standard protagonist who rises to the occasion. He didn't follow the hero's journey and wasn't like anyone I had witnessed up until then. Shinji's weak first impression aside, I managed to watch all of Evangelion and thoroughly enjoy it. The members of the diverse cast each tackled a different mental issue and offered a new perspective on life. Whether it was Misato's carefree lifestyle or Asuka's exuberant arrogance, every character had something to love every character except Shinji. I resented Shinji because I saw myself in him and was scared. Scared like the 14-year-old boy that was launched to the heavens to fight an angel. As I previously mentioned, Evangelion is a story about the resiliency of the human spirit. But more specifically, it's a story about the resilience of its creator, Hideki Anno. Anno wasn't satisfied with the finale to his magnum opus, so he remade it again and again until he nailed it down and ended the series like he wanted to. That's where the newest film, Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0 Thrice Upon a Time comes into this video. Something about the ending to Evangelion never sat right with me. In both the original TV anime and the later released end of Evangelion movie, the ending always seemed so unsatisfactory. Like in 25 to 26, Shinji just accepts himself and learns to move on, and we're left with this oddly presented congratulations scene. I'm aware that Ava faced budget cuts near the end of production, but learning to accept this ending was a difficult task for me. And not only me, but also the entire Ava fandom back when it aired. Fans of this series reigned a terror so powerful on Studio Gainax and Anno himself that the toxic fandoms of the modern era could never hope to achieve. So in response to the backlash and criticism, Anno released what would then seem to be his final installment into the franchise, The End of Evangelion. End of Ava provided an alternative, less mind-fucking of an ending to Evangelion. In this ending, Shinji rejects his humanity, and instead of deciding to move on and grow like he did in the original, he decides to carry through with instrumentality and commence the third impact. 
And for the next 20 minutes of the film, what we witness is a mixture of guttural screams from a lost boy, questions about philosophy, and the deaths of our favorite characters. Watching this ending was a jarring experience to say the least. It had all the uncomfortable feelings of Evangelion that I have grown to love, and it tapped into a much more cynical take on how the story should end. And I never realized just how empty it left me until I watched the rebuilds. The rebuilds of Evangelion were a complete reboot of the franchise that Hideki Anno started off in 2007 and aimed to complete with his true ending to the franchise. An ending that would not just be about acceptance, but also moving forward. And that's exactly what Thrice Upon a Time was. This film had heavy themes of becoming an adult, moving forward, and accepting the past. It was the first time we got to see Gendo describe his motivation so clearly. In his desire to cling to his late wife Yui, Gendo set out to wipe out humanity, just so that he could see his wife one more time. In contrast, Shinji actually learns to move forward in this film. In the end, we see as he comes to a close with everyone that he's ever interacted with and is about to destroy all of Evangelion and say goodbye to the only reality that he knows. And only then is he free of the curse of Eva. Only then is he free to grow up. And only then does the sun truly set on Evangelion. I may have stated some of my complaints about the series throughout this video, but you should know that I wouldn't change a thing about Ava. This show has taught me more about life and perseverance than any other piece of fiction ever could. I watched Evangelion whilst in the middle of one of the most uncertain parts of my life, and I finished it by watching Thrice Upon a Time the weekend before I'm leaving to college. And I've interpreted this coincidence in my life as Anno's or the universe's way of letting me know that it's time to move on from the greatest piece of fiction I know. Because clinging on to this one experience could hold me back and force me to make the same mistakes over and over again. But if I just let go for a moment, I might be able to enjoy this uncharted future. And I doubt this message is exclusive to me. Thrice Upon a Time is Anno saying to himself and to all the fans of the series that enough is enough. And eventually you need to learn how to move on to fully appreciate what life has to offer. I no longer hate Shinji Ikari, because I've finally seen a side to him that exudes hope and confidence. And in presenting that Shinji to us, Anno is saying essentially that we too can gain control of our lives, just like Shinji did. So, to answer the question I presented at the start of this video, how do you start to say goodbye? Well, you start by saying good morning. You acknowledge all the great memories you had and remember the first time you met. You then move on to saying good night. You seek closure, not just with that one thing, but everything connected with it. Next, you say thank you for having undergone these past experiences and for everything that you have learned. Then comes the hard part, saying goodbye. It's always gonna be bittersweet, no matter how ready you are for it. And trust me, I've said my fair share of goodbyes in my life, and it never gets easier. But goodbye isn't the end, it's simply a new beginning. As illustrated by the end of Thrice Upon a Time, sometimes you have to let go of everything you know to grow up, and that's a very scary thing to do. But after the fear subsides, you'll be left feeling refreshed and born anew, and then, only then, can you continue to move forward. So, this last message goes out to Shinji, Rei, Asuka, Karu, Misato, Ritsuko, Kaji, Toji, Kensuke, Gendo, and Hideki Anno himself. Good morning, good night, thank you, and goodbye to all of Evangelion.